good Saturday afternoon. It's February 22nd, 2020. Sounds crazy. All right, let's... <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, today's movie is The Hitchhiker. Um, it's quite good. It's from 1953. It stars Frank Lovejoy, Edmund O'Brien, and William Talman. Uh, it is directed by Ida Lupito, which is a, a lady, a lady filmmaker, which is a little bit uh, uncharacteristic of 1953. Oh, it's an RKO picture, too, so it's not, it's not totally, totally independent. Um, and it's a noir. And on the back of the box, it says it's the its cultural significance is the only classic film noir directed by a woman, which I guess I don't know. Maybe there are other ones. Um, yeah, it's pretty badass. It's it's a true story. It's kind of it's it's all right, so it's basically just a two guys going fishing, and they're kind of they don't seem really pumped. You know, you know they they seem depressed. They're kind of commiserating about their involvement in the war and uh, they pick up a hitchhiker who kidnaps them and just holds them at gunpoint and makes them drive uh, down Mexicali way to the ocean essentially and uh, very simplistic it's strange it's almost like a movie with um, just a second act there's like no f the first act is like two scenes and then it's just we're going and then there's like climax and ends the movie's 71 minutes it's like got no first act no second act which is weird it makes it feel like a really long short film if that makes sense to you and it might not and that's fine but you hopefully understand what i'm saying who have been kidnapped and only in one person with a gun and you know we we know that one of them was at the very least one of them was in the war and it's like, all right, you know, just jump on him or something. But obviously that would just end the movie. And I think it, once you get to the end, it makes sense. It, you know, it's not that it's like some huge twist or anything, but you're like, you know what? This is about a real situation. This is like how this works, you know? It's not a movie, you know? They're not superheroes. They're just kind of like, shit. Like, when do I jump on them and I fail, you know? <laughs> like, my buddy gets shot. Like, they're just kind of biding their time. And they're weak. Not that they're weak characters, but, you know, after traveling for a long time, not getting, you know, they're not getting exactly getting good night rests after this takes place over a couple days, and they're not eating really well, and they're, like, kind of out in the wilderness. You see how it would break somebody down. Um, like, sometimes I have trouble just attacking the day, and I have, you know, and it's just like, oh, i got to do some laundry and teach a class for three hours and walk my dog and I'm like I can't do it I can't muster the energy the courage um so I get I get it you know and I think in a lot of situations just the presence of a gun you know like I think a lot of people think that oh if there was an active shooter I'd be I'd be on top of it you know I'd be like the guy running at him or the lady who like trips him and fucking elbows him in the face and gets the gun but I think in reality you would a lot of people you know there's flight fight or flight there's actually a third one called freeze uh, I have found that I tend to freeze and that's when you just you just shut down you're just like uh, you don't know how to react at all um, yeah so I think I think a lot of people are actually at least a third I'd say are in the freeze category of fight flight or freeze anyway uh, yeah it's got really good noir black and white faces you know Especially the bad guy, William Tallman. He's got like a like a paralyzed eye, you know. That's how you know he's evil. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have too too much to say about it. That it, I mean, it's bold, obviously, um, that a woman was allowed to make such uh, a masculine movie. You know, there, I don't think there are any women in it. And obviously, you know, there should be more representation in film as a whole, and it should represent the public. You know, there should be whatever the breakdown is in the United States. There should be that 
similar breakdown in the directors, you know. And obviously it's going to take a while because it's been a white dude's game for a while. But um, there was a time period where e- even if you were a female director, you could only make movies about, like, knitting and, like, weddings and stuff like that, you know, like tip things that were seen as female topics. Um, whereas this is, like, very... Uh, you know, it's like a gun punching in the face, like noir movie. That's why that you know she stands out. There's you know they and they recognize her there, uh, and it's incredibly well made. You know, it's very simple but effective. A lot can be learned for filmmakers from this movie. Uh, builds and holds the tension very well, and I think even would even work upon a second viewing. Even though a lot of movies like this, where it's kind of just a one event, oh, how's the event going to turn out? Once you know, kind of that releases the tension. But because the movie is almost not anticlimactic, but doesn't have like some huge cinematic type ending, that that lends it actually to watch it unfold and focus more on the characters, which is what it's about. Is you know how how power power dynamics the movie could have been called power dynamics but it wouldn't have done very well um i don't know if it did well to begin with but it's certainly popular now ever since roughly in the 90s or some odd uh scorsese started talking about ida ida or ida uh lupito uh lupino uh who ended up made one more film she made three four films all together two before this this one and then one more and then went into television and had like a prolific television career. She was also an actress and did a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, inspirational for all the young ladies out there. Uh, I would check it out. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm inspired now to watch some of her other movies. So uh, you can find these online. I bet. Okay. Uh, I I'll promise a new song tomorrow. But um, there's something going on with this one that I like. I like. Um, no, no sound really stands out from the other. Yeah, it does actually. Alright, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like.